Hey guys, we're uh, back here looking at my water heater. Uh, never a dull moment on the homestead. Uh, a couple of days back, this uh, pilot light went out on this unit, and we noticed that because the when you try to take a hot shower and the hot water heater hasn't been on in a while, it, it's it gets pretty cold pretty fast. And uh, so after after that, I came out here, opened this up, and started investigating, looking around, seeing what was going on. I restarted the pilot light. Uh, a couple of times. It went out again later on and, and as I was looking around and poking around down here I noticed that there's water down in that bottom that catch pan, that tray. And it's not a whole lot. You can see hopefully the shine on that. but And you know that's not totally uncommon for just a tiny bit to be down in there but there's a little more than usual and sometimes these relief valves can, can trip off and that can be your problem. They'll let a little bit of water out and it'll seep out. Usually it'll be close to the proximity of the bottom of that pipe though, but uh, it's not really in that zone necessarily. It's uh, probably about an eighth inch all the way around. Uh, so I started looking further. I thought, well, okay, you know, water runs downhill. Let's check out the top. And as I was looking, I found this. The tank fitting is leaking. So I, I immediately looked and traced it up this line to see if this line was dry. It was dry. No problem there. Uh, check the fitting right here. Make sure that, you know, this fitting where it connects into the pipe nipple was, was good. It was good. Uh, so that only leaves the connection from the nipple into the tank. And my big concern here is I've had these things break in the past. Uh, they're they're not very they're not very robust. You start getting on them, and and if they're seized in there from rust, that you know you're, you're cranking down on it with a pipe wrench, and uh, it can break. So you got to be really really careful as you're doing this, because uh, it can be bad if it breaks. Because then you have to go and get a pipe extractor if you don't already have one, and you have to drive that down in there and hope for the best. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't, uh, but. I just want to show you guys this. This is how it goes as a homeowner. You need to, uh, here's, here's the tool list you're going to need. Uh, crescent wrench, big one, at least for my application. Uh, good size, you know, medium size pipe wrench. And a little bucket. And one of your wife's towels. You're going to make sure and get a washcloth or something. Uh, you know, one of her favorite ones. And make sure and use that. Okay, we're back. I just wanted to show you what I had to do to get this thing off of here. I uh, had to go out to the shop and grab this ratchet strap so that I wouldn't uh, twist the thing off its base because it was moving around. And I had to grab this uh, piece of pipe here. It's an old piece of fencing top rail, just a short piece, but I needed a little bit more length on my uh, pipe wrench so that I could get this thing off. And I actually had a buddy come by earlier and hold the tank, and I was afraid I was going to crush it. So what I ended up doing was this... Uh, this little blue thing here that's on the inside of the the pipe nipple and it's a some kind of a little flap to keep the hot water from running out or the cold water from coming back in I'm not sure either way uh, I pulled that out of there with a screwdriver and then I was able to take a bolt like this and drop it down inside the hole I'm not sure what size bolt it is just you want the biggest bolt you can get and so that you don't crush the the pipe nipple as you're trying to undo it with your with your uh, pipe wrench so anyhow it was quite a job uh, i had to have a buddy come by and help hold the thing for me and luckily after a lot of uh this penetrating i used this liquid wrench penetrating oil squirted that on there several times and waited and thought about it and uh, about talked myself out of doing it but then finally i was able to uh, break the thing loose and this one here has a has an anode rod on it, so that will uh, we'll be replacing that with a new one, and make sure to put some Teflon tape on there. Uh, probably about at least three or four wraps, maybe five even, because you want to keep the uh, electrolysis action down to a minimal. And plus, it'll give it a little bit of lubrication as you're putting the uh, putting the new fitting in. So. Anyways, hope this helps you guys out. Uh, it was quite a job, and like I said, I had to have a buddy come by and uh, use my biggest uh, 
uh, pipe wrench and my extension just to get the thing off of there. So uh, good luck to you. I wouldn't recommend putting any heat on this because you can see there's plastic and stuff like that attached to it that would just melt right off into your water tank. So uh, if, you, uh, if you're persistent and put enough uh, penetrating lube on there, then hopefully it'll come off for you. All right, good luck. Okay, here's the final product. Uh, I changed out that nipple for a new one, and you can see where, the, of course, there's still rust there. I'm probably going to try to clean some of that up best I can. I pulled this little thing off just so I could observe in there. As you can see, you can see down in there a bit better. So I'm going to watch that for, you know, a week, three or four days, five days or whatever, pretty heavily, and uh, make sure that that's what the problem was. Uh, but so far, no leaks and everything's looking good. Got the water turned back on. And uh, this is a job you can do yourself, but you, like I said, you got to be prepared because it's a... Uh, takes a lot of strength to get these off when they're seized in there like that and you got to be you know you don't want to go too hard on it because you can break it and then you'd have to dig the thing out of there so anyways guys hopefully this helps you out and uh, we'll see you next time